Warning, this video and all other videos on this channel are for entertainment purposes only. The content of this video and all other videos on this channel are the opinions of the creator only and do not constitute legal, trading, investment, or financial advice of any kind. Investing carries a high level of risk and the majority of retail clients lose money. Do not invest in capital unless you understand the risk and you are prepared to lose it all. Calmly walk to a seat. Ding, 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 ding. Boom. Okay. Missile launch. Pshin. Yeah. Right, hello and welcome to Camel Finance. I'm your boy Camel and it's bank holiday. So I imagine a bunch of you are going to be taking the day off today and probably views are going to be low. There's also not a great deal that has happened since the weekend's deep dive. So don't expect a great deal of alpha. But I got a couple of things I wanted to point out. First of all, okay. <laughs> trading on inflation data. Trading on copper liquidity cycles. Trading on Nancy Pelosi being banned. Trading on sunspots. That is the time that we live in. Also, for anyone that wants to play a drinking game or bingo, you can screenshot this and play along in future episodes. I'm actually thinking about even having a live stream, some kind of party later in life where we do something like this. So putting that on the back burner for now. I found this and I thought this was fantastic because I'm about to show you one of my favorite Bitcoin metrics of all time. If you bought Bitcoin with your $1,200 stimulus check back in 2020, you'd now have just over 12K. How good is that? And do you know what's hilarious about this? Like I said, one of my favorite Bitcoin metrics was at the time that they gave everyone the stimulus checks, the number of deposits and buys that were exactly $1,200 on Coinbase shot through the roof. (laughs) So I absolutely love this. And if those people just held for the four years, like I said, we're now sitting on over $12,000 worth of Bitcoin. So pretty decent. Speaking of Bitcoin, really, really nice chart here from Kushi. We got Bitcoin at the bottom and the S&P at the top. Now, what's really interesting about this is it kind of implies, if indeed this is the correct count and if indeed this is what's going to continue to play out, that there is one final squeeze left, okay, followed by the violation of that parabola, that blow off top. You'll also notice this occurred after this expanded flat pattern. And down at the bottom for Bitcoin, what have we got? Same expanded flat pattern followed by a parabola and we are just slightly behind. Does this tell us that again, what we could expect to see is perhaps a five wave impulse up here, followed by the violation of a parabola, all occurring roughly around the same time. As ever, we keep taking it one day at a time, and we also keep objectively observing what is in play. And so far, unless something changes, okay, unless something starts to break down and go sideways very, very quickly, then I have to continue to accept this as the current thing that is playing out. We're still seeing this space, the Bitcoin and the crypto space becoming increasingly politicized. I'm not sure what I make of this, apart from largely speaking, it's kind of just what I would expect to see close to tops. I would expect hype to build. I would expect those headlines, as I was saying, things like government are pro-crypto now, government has pivoted stance. Wall Street is now embracing not just Bitcoin, but also Ethereum ETFs. And then the speculation will be other altcoin ETFs are not too far away. All of this to me just speaks to the hype that we would expect to experience into that final leg to the upside. Over in traditional finance, when we filter the triple Qs, which is of course the proxy for the NASDAQ, seasonality data to only include election years, the index has outperformed during the next three months. So this whole idea of sell in May go away, not really true. And apparently based on historical data, especially not true during election years. Again, it tells us to keep an open mind about seeing another squeeze into the coming months at the least. I know this is one of the biggest pushbacks I get, but Camel, how can you be calling for a top or how can you be expecting a top in the not too distant future, perhaps as early as July or August when it's an election year? Surely because it's an election year, they won't allow this thing to crash. 
right? And maybe they, maybe that's true, right? Maybe I'm completely wrong. But again, it goes back to that chart. Unless something changes and changes quickly, and if indeed we do get a squeeze higher, then I don't really see another way for this thing to play out. Again, I'm just objectively observing what is happening in front of me. Whilst July, August is the expectation based on this kind of setup, that does not necessarily mean I'm not open to seeing both an earlier and a much later top. I'm also completely open. I think if this is invalidated, I think the next most probable top would be somewhere around December or January of next year. So as ever, open to everything. But again, if this thing keeps squeezing, if this thing starts to impulse in five waves to the top, I don't really understand how else to interpret the data. I will be selling trendline breakdowns and parabola violations. And from traditional finance over to gold, okay, hedge funds have just built the largest long position in gold in more than four years. So are you on the right side of this trade? Have you been capturing the gold breakout above the prior all-time high level over the last few weeks? Hedge funds are not a metric I tend to like to use a great deal because they are often very, very wrong in their positioning. But when we pull up a gold chart and zoom out, okay, it is difficult to argue with this big range and at the hard right edge an emergence and a break from that range. Right now, it appears to me like we are trying to force an early daily cycle. Having just had a longer daily cycle, that would give us a perfect average of around 50 days. So it's got some work to do. I wanna see a big, strong green push. That would be the confirmation that we have indeed got a new daily cycle. We would need to get back above the upward sloping red support line as well. In the meantime, we also have to be open to breakdown, retest, resumption lower. If that's the case, then it'd be time to be getting out of the way of some trades. But for now, long and strong, see what the market can give. The rest of the markets are of course closed today because it is a bank holiday. Okay, we can take a quick look at Bitcoin. No real progress. Now, I wanna just flag this for the sake of flagging it. If indeed what we've got is a early day 42 cycle low, then objectively speaking, okay, we have spent around 26 days of the 60 day cycle low doing not a great deal. Okay, now some people will say, yeah, well, that's up 15, 20%, whatever the number is, and that is objectively true, but it's also net sideways, okay, net sideways for months. So unless we can start to break above these prior highs, and unless we can do so very, very pronto, then it increases the probability that we have to waste another 60 day cycle before we can think about moving higher. If that's in play, then all three scenarios are on the table, all three meaning a higher low, right? An equal low or double bottom with this low and an undercut of that low. For now, innocent until proven guilty. But like I said, if that is the real count, then we have already wasted about half of the cycle without really getting outside of this range. Another way to interpret it is that we actually got a sneaky timing based cycle low, meaning the low here is the correct count. That would give us somewhere in the neighborhood of 56 days for the cycle low, much more legal, much more normal and to be expected inside the timing window. However, this is a bit wonky because we would typically expect the cycle low to be the lowest low in the daily cycle. And of course, this is a higher low. Not the first time we've ever seen it. In fact, we got it here, right? The lowest low was right here. This ended up being a timing based cycle low that was of course not the lowest low in this daily cycle and off we went. We also saw something similar here in this daily cycle. You can see daily cycle low, we had a fake out failed cycle. We ended up forming a timing based cycle low that was also not the lowest low in the daily cycle. And so fast forward to today, I do wonder if this indeed is a normal and to be expected thing for Bitcoin. Completely atypical, would never expect to see something like this in gold or in the S&P 500, for example. But as you can see, Bitcoin has a history of doing this. So if that's the case, that is wholly speaking a lot more positive because it means we're only around 12 days into this current daily cycle. And thus, we might still be leaving on the table something like this. So the thing I think we should all be looking out for is, of course, getting a strong push out of here. If we do, we could possibly breathe a sigh of relief and say, OK, bullish. But you know, again, if this indeed is wasting half the cycle already, it tells us to be open to at least another month before we can think about finding a cycle low and attacking to the upside. I'll say one more thing about this. If indeed that's what's in play and we are going to chop around for another month, whilst I see a lot of people saying, yeah, that's super bullish, that's super bullish. Well, if we flip over to the stock market charts, I want to ask you this question to ponder, okay? If that is what Bitcoin does, puts in another month of chop, maybe even comes down to undercut the low against a backdrop of the S&P squeezing higher, then is that really bullish? I'm not convinced it is. I think that would speak to relative underlying weakness of Bitcoin. So personally, that's not something I want to see. From a cycle perspective, I want to see Bitcoin start to squeeze higher into tomorrow and the rest of the week sessions. As ever, we'll take it one day at a time. We'll see what the market can give. No emotions, no bias, just pure objectivity, knowing our invalidation levels. I am going fishing tomorrow. So good luck with a market crash. Maybe put some shorts on. <laughs> I'm kidding. Don't, 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 don't. Other than that, I'll love you and leave you. I hope you have a fantastic day off. I've got some weird content coming out tomorrow, just some non-time sensitive stuff. So have a look out for that. 
And otherwise, I'll be back on Wednesday. Until then, take care from me. All the best. Cheers. Bye.